Hey, I'm Vincent Smith, and I want to welcome you back to another unboxing with an engineer. So today we're going to talk about supplementing or moving away from this cordless tool. This is, this is my plane. This is one of the several planes you've seen on the workbench behind me in some of these episodes. And I'm going to supplement that with something we're going to unbox today. That's right. I went out this weekend and bought a DeWalt 735X planer, a, cord, a corded planer. So I am not replacing, but supplementing cordless plane. What are you doing, Booger? The play. There you go, our safety inspector's hard at work. So Woodcraft had these eh, kind of on sale. They didn't have a sale. I've been watching these things for about 18 months now and they just never seem to go on sale. They all, they, they just don't, but Woodcraft had a deal where if you bought the planer at full price, you got a free stand with us. I thought, okay, that's, that's gonna be as close as I get to getting this thing on sale. So I went, I ran over there and picked one up, brought it home and we're gonna open it up together. But first thing I got to show you, I don't know what it is about yellow boxes, but they just seem to scream target. They, they seem to scream, kick me, abuse me, beat me, throw something through me. Hell, take me out in the field and shoot me. I don't know what's going on with these things, but I've never purchased a large DeWalt tool in a yellow box that didn't show up with something like this. You know, the rest of the box is in pretty good shape, but it's just something about the shipping of these boxes, they just seem to scream, abuse me. Hey, move those boxes over there. Can't even move them. No, I'm in, I'm in over there. Yeah, that's it. No, man, put them back where they were. Man, I'm so freaking bored. Let's go to the shooting range. We got nothing to hang up the targets. Get, get that mother. What are you two jokers doing? Get back to work. Get that crap on the truck. Got a package for Hank? Yeah, I'm Hank. Oh, I got something for you. Yep, that looks about right. All right, let's see what's in the first box to come off top here. So in the top. When you open this up, there's two boxes. Look to be about the same size, cardboard boxes, flat. Oh, look, it's a toaster tray. Oh, no, wait, I think that's the in feed table. In feed out feed tables come with the 735X. If you buy the 735, I believe the difference between the 735 and the 735X is the X comes with in feed and out feed table extensions, i.e., this thing, and the 735X also includes an extra set of blades. Now on the top here, there are the extra set of blades in a, oh, I'm actually impressed. These things showed up in a case that, okay, 
It's actually sealed up with a sticker here. It says open with care, so I'm probably the wrong guy to do that. But yeah, all right, so far impressed. They've got, they've got a nice case there, and this would even serve well to ship them off when you need them sharpened and get them back in. There's the obligatory uh, manual for folks who you know, read manuals. And yeah, I'll be honest with you, as an engineer, I do read these things. I'll read this thing front to back later on tonight sitting on the couch. Next up, we've got the uh, training wheels, I guess. Yeah? No? Oh, no. I'm imagining that would be the depth, the height adjustment crank. And the muffler, I guess. I don't know. It's like a lawnmower muffler, but actually that's probably the probably an adapter for a shop back or something on the outfeed of this thing. I'm, I'm guessing. Don't actually know if that's the answer or not. Let me put these aside. The obligatory iceberg that comes with every included free with every Dewalt you buy. I think the dog just ate a chunk of the iceberg. Goofball. And hernia. First impression, oh, here we go. That's gonna go right on there. Looks like there's a torque screw on it and a flat. There's a, there's a round shaft that comes out here, a flat on there, and it is a torx head. So I bet you this torx wrench is just so conveniently stored inside the top of the machine there, just happens to fit that. Got a little washer on there, don't drop the washer. Just drop that on there, find the flat spot. Line up your flat spot with the flat spot on your control shaft. And look at that, it slides right on there. Tighten that up now, trust me. Not a lot of force needed here. That, all, that, all that Torx bit screw does is keep this from falling off. It's an anti-gravity device. Don't be putting 400 foot-pounds on that thing because all you're going to do is break it. Now, my first impressions, it feels very well made. I feel a lot of metal. I feel you know, whatever this heavy-duty kryptonite uh, plastic is that they're using. I like it. Um, I, I did a lot of reading and a lot of research as usual on these, these planers before I bought this one. I came close to buying one from a company that used to be called Q-Tech and it got bought out by another firm that I can't remember their name. I do already have a Q-Tech 8 inch joiner that I like. It has a helical head on it whereas this particular model has the straight blades and you're going to find about 16 bazillion videos on YouTube to tell you what kind of a helical head to buy for this. They make two different sizes. One's a little bit smaller than the other so that you don't have to take some components of this apart to install it. Uh, the other one's a little bit bigger. The advantage of the bigger diameter, you can cut down to a thinner material. I'm sure there's some advantages in the amount of torque you get because with a smaller radius, you're gonna have more power at your cutter head, but it's also gonna be spinning at a slower speed. So there's some trade-offs there that you'll have to figure out on your own. For now, the little bit of work I'm going to use this for, I've got a couple nightstands and a couple dressers and a couple desks I need to build. And I think I'm going to try to get through just with the straight blades for now. Whenever I do upgrade to a helical head, of course, I'm going to keep you in on that. But the helical heads, I like. They've got those little square cutter heads on them. And I'll maybe put a little video in here that shows you on my, my Q-Tech uh, joiner. The little cutter heads actually have some, anywhere between two and four cutting sides to them so that you know when one of them dulls you just you just loosen it up turn it 90 degrees crank it back down it's self-indexing problem solved whereas with these if you get a nick in these blades the whole blade's got to go in and get sharpened whereas with the helical heads there's you know maybe a dozen of those things lined up across there so you can just take the one out with the nick in it pitch it turn or turn it 90 degrees if you've already turned it 90 degrees before you've used up all the sides on it you just pitch it and put one more little cutter head on it. So I do like that, but I mean, this, this, this piece was, uh, it was right around like $640 at $625 somewhere. Oh, hey, the receipt's right here. I paid including tax 
wow, grand total of $700 for this thing. It was $660, and they threw in the, the stand for free. So that's about what they go for. You can get them on Amazon. This I'm filming this in November of 2020. You know, we're, we're day after election day. Don't know who's going to be president, whatever. Um, but you can get them on Amazon for $590. You know, but then you've got to deal with the shipping and you're not going to know what the box is going to look like when it gets to you. Reference the beginning of this video. So you can see right here, this is your, this is your overall thickness gauge and you can see cranking this handle. That went up a half an inch. So that, that's just the overall thickness of your material. Whereas this over here is the indicator for how much you're removing at each particular pass. And with this particular item, I mean, this, this gauge goes up to an eighth of an inch you probably want to be doing a pretty narrow board in this direction to remove an eighth of an inch at a pass. And I'm not sure what kind of finish you're going to get on that. You know, somewhere around a 32nd at a pass is really where you want to be for a fine finish. One of the biggest reasons I, I chose this planer, even at its significantly higher expense over most of the other planers on the market, is the fact that it has, it's got four screws on each corner that adjust the height of your cut. And I just can't help but feel like that's a whole lot more stable than the ones you see that either just have two screws or they've got two screws that are just three or four inches apart right here. And I think, I think this, you can see that this is roughly a square device. It just seems so much more stable to me. And I, I, that was the biggest reason for my choice. Gotta tell you. Well, let's take a look down inside here, see if there's anything you see that sticks out to you, but your, your material is going to feed in across here. It's a very highly polished surface, and your cutter heads are right up there. They're going to, obviously, these are your feed rollers here and here. That's your cutter head. Uh, this device is not plugged in, so that's why I got my hands in here. Um, you've got some guides here that keep you from going off the side and away from where the cutter heads are. And it actually looks like they're located about three quarters of an inch outboard of where the, the cutter head ends right here. And you got another three quarter inch to the, I guess you call this a guide. So I guess you're gonna have to manually make sure that your material stays within the path of the cutter heads. But very solidly built. Most of this is, this is a machined aluminum piece. Can't say if it looks like it was a casting that was machined you know, where it needed to be machined. It's not a billet piece. And then your plastic from here up. I just remembered a couple purposes of this hex tool, hex torch tool. And one of those is to take the top off of this thing so that you can change the blades. So before I read the book, because I want to give you my first impressions, not my impressions after being informed, who'd want to be informed? No, I'm just kidding. I've, I've spent a lot of time researching this thing before I made this purchase. As most engineers do, I, you know, my wife will tell you, I overthink about everything. But I remember that this tool serves as the wrench to remove the top cover. But that's not all. Down inside here, now these little red handles, you can give you a nice little bench there little tray there to put stuff in as you're taking it apart. Might even be for where you can store those extra blades as you remove them. You take all three of these off. And this is the blade cover. off just like that that's also looks like the shroud see this you imagine this is where all, all the these are the blades and all the chips come up into here get sucked into here by this fan motor this actually has a fan on it that's why you don't have to run this with a dust collection system it has an internal fan that sucks those chips out blows them out in your driveway or your neighbor's yard if you don't like your neighbor that much or wherever it is you decide to point this thing don't stand in front of it but right there, you can see the top edge of one of the blades. Right there, that's one of the blades. Now, this device is still unplugged, so I can stick my hands in there without getting hollered at. But you can see that this is, this is your cutter head. See it spinning around here? 
a little bit disconcerted actually that there's a bracket over here that seems to be loose. Of course, maybe it's supposed to be loose. Let me spin you around here so you can get a better angle at that. But if you look down here, you can see this particular bracket right here. Let me get you some light. You can see this bracket right here is somewhat loose. You know, maybe it's supposed to be. It actually feels like You gotta be very careful putting wrenches down here with good blades. Yeah, that, that screw is tight. Those are shoulder screws. For some reason, that's supposed to be loose. I'm sure I'll, we'll find out why at some point. But here's your cutter head. Now, this is the piece you can replace with one of these helical cutter heads that you know gives you a little bit more. It's an even distribution of power. From an engineering standpoint, you can imagine this blade is straight across, perpendicular to the flow of the work. The work travels in this direction and that blade hits the entire width of your, your piece of wood at the, exactly the same instant. So there's an instantaneous draw on the power, whereas the helical cutter heads are just that. The, the, the little square cutter heads I told you about, they're in a helical pattern around this thing to where only one or two of them actually hit the work and make a cut at any given time. So it's a more even distribution of power, lessens the load on the motor, and I'm assuming this, yeah, this, this is actually the fan motor and the drive motor. You can see the belt right here that, that goes down here to run the cutter head. And when you spin the cutter head, you can even see it move. Uh, see the belt move right there? Maybe not. But, and there is a chain drive back in here. And you're probably going, well, that's the drive for the motor. Well, no, that chain drive is actually, watch as I spin this handle right here. This is the, remember the height adjustment handle? Watch that chain. Watch that chain when I spin the handle. That That's your height adjustment chain. That's what keeps all four of these height adjusters synchronized. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to show you while I had it open, these are magnets. And these magnets you actually use when you are changing the blades. Yeah, not a real good example, but the, you use these to pull your blades in and out while you're down in there. So that's the second purpose that it serves. All right, so I found out something a little funny here before I even got to reading the book again. I'll lie to you one more time. These little buttons here, even though they have an Allen head in them, they're spring-loaded. So the idea is that you hook this, they're both spring-loaded. The one on this end pushes in two, so you cock this up like this, you hook it over the one on the other side, and then you push that in. Ta-da! Your in-feed, out-feed tray is in place. And it does actually fold up pretty good there. I don't know if you ever need to store this thing with this thing up a little bit, but the power cord's right smack in the way. So you can't, you can't get it up all the way. Uh, so you can't fold that up all the way because the power cord's right there now. All right, so there's, our first, there's our first complaint I've got about this particular item is that that power cord should have exited the vehicle, exited the chassis about, an inch to the right there, inch and a quarter to the right, if that came out right here, or if it even exited up here possibly. And I don't remember seeing anything in there that would have prevented this cord from coming out right up here. Remember, we just had the lid off of this. You'd be able to fold this all the way up and it could even put a magnet in here to hold that thing up in a folded position. Have a little bump out of the plastic right here that just sticks out flush with this piece with a magnet in it. And that would fold up and stay there. Now, the one on the other side, that'd be a whole nother matter because you got to remember the other side is the front of the device. Actually, on this side, it would have worked out pretty well too. I guess it still could. Just all that there, it folds up just perfect. Now, it, it doesn't have anything there that's really designed. The, the thing hits the speed knob. So this is, this is your speed one, speed two, it's two speed feed. But it's just a shame that they didn't think to put, like right here, a little piece of plastic came out just a just an eighth of an inch further than the knob and put a magnet in it and ding! And you can, you know, I mean, admittedly, it'll stay there on its own on the front, but it would have been just that much more. So, Dewalt, there's you an idea for your next version of this planer, even though this one's been around for quite a while. I don't see him replacing this thing anytime soon, so. 
Well, I just realized we're not actually finished with our unboxing. So I know not too many people are that interested in unboxing of the stand, so I'm gonna put this on fast forward, do the unboxing, maybe even the assembly, and then I'll give you my thoughts real quick. This is a DW7350. There you have it folks. I firm with the stand, it's a stand. I've put a few of these together in my lifetime and they do it, they do their job. You know, the only thing you've got to decide is it worth the cost because you know obviously you can take some plywood and pretty inexpensively you can build you can build you a stand, something like this, for probably 20 bucks, 30 bucks at the most. So you just have to decide is the time worth the money for you because you can buy this, put it together in this much time, or you can do this and it might take you two or three times as long. So anyway, like I said, the reason I bought this particular item this particular time is because the stand came free, so that's what I'm gonna use. Let's get back to the review of the planner itself. <clears throat> Hey, we're back. So I read the books and I read the box and there's a few things written on the outside of the box here I want to point out to you and talk about. Um, the first one is that the cutter head on this planer spins at 10,000 RPM. Any tool that spins at 10,000 RPM is something to be respected. That thing could grab a chunk of wood and spit it out in a way that will give you an unexpected appendectomy. Um, three knife cutter head, we already looked at that earlier when we had the, uh, the cover off the top. Two-speed gearbox for 96 or 179 cuts per inch. What that means is that when you know we talked about this thing has a two-speed gearbox on here. When you have it on the higher feed speed, the 10,000 RPM cutter head is going to hit it fewer times per inch of feed. So as the wood feeds through the planer, the cutter head will either make 96 cuts per inch or 179 cuts per inch. So when you're doing your rough material removal, you can feed it through there faster with fewer cuts per inch to get things done a little quicker. But for your last pass or two, you might want to cut it down to where you have more cuts per inch to get a finer uh, finish on it. Um, we talked, we looked at the fan assisted chip ejection yesterday. I did find out that the this little device is required to be on the planer. So we're going to install that and leave it on there. Um, I guess they must make different sizes for different size hoses, but you have to have one of them on there at all times. Um, Built-in carriage lock, material removal gauge. We looked at that yesterday. And if we look here a little bit closer, let me get this to where you can actually see it without the glare on it. There we go. Each width of your material lines up to how much material you can remove at a pass. So if you have a nine inch board, you can only remove one sixteenth of an inch per pass. And as you feed your material into the planer, this is going to hop up and show you how much you're removing at a pass. So that's how that works. The, we also have a thickness scale. The turret depth stop is this item we were looking at yesterday, this knob here. What that does is if you set it to one eighth of an inch, there's a stop up in the bottom up here that comes down on top of this pin so that as you spin this knob around to the different stops, like right now it's on three quarter of an inch stop. So when the, the, the stop in here hits this, the depth from the blade to the table is gonna be three quarters of an inch. So that's that comes in real handy right there. The we talked yesterday some, and I made a mistake, and I talked about actually shipping these knives off to have them sharpened. Well, it doesn't do that. But the one advantage they've got here is the knives have, uh, they're reversible. They have an edge on each side of it so that this particular 735X came with a set of extra blades. So you have four cutting edges that when they're dull, you just pitch them and replace them. 
Um, it's quick for bench mounting. I'm not sure why they don't think you wouldn't just assume that. I did find a little bit of information in the warranty that I was surprised that this has one year free service. Uh, Dewalt will maintain the tool and replace worn parts caused by normal use for free anytime during the first year after purchase. I, that's kind of impressive to me. 90 day money back guarantee. If you're not satisfied with it, they're going to take it back, give you your money back. Three year limited warranty. We all know how that works. You know, if you've overused the thing or abused it in any way, they're not going to cover it. But three years is significant. So I was a little bit impressed with that. So I think I may have actually figured out what it was that attracted me to this planer that I couldn't figure out before is that when you look at this planer from this view, one, the, the four corners being so spread out, we talked about gives it a lot more, in my mind, gives it a lot more stability. But the other thing is this looks exactly like the scene from the Terminator at the end where they squashed it. All right, well, I think we've done enough to sit around talking about this thing. Let's take it for a test drive now. One thing I do know about these from reading about them and all the other reviews I watch is they are very loud. So you definitely want to wear your PPE and protect your eyes at all times. So they're very loud. You might want to double up on your hearing protection just because it's very loud. Well, before I could even get to testing, I found out that the big old hole in the top of the box, here we look at that. This big hole here, apparently something pretty heavy went through it because if you remember what was in the boxes in the top of the package, pick a gander right there. She got a bow in her, something came in and smacked that and bent it. So I'm going to remove this for the, um, you know, to test this thing out, but I'm going to have to take, and hopefully they'll let me just swap these tables out at the, at the Woodcraft and not return the whole thing and bring another one home, but I may wind up having to open in another box. So let's go out here and test this thing. So for the sake of testing, what I did was I just went ahead and removed the infeed table. And we're gonna, I got just a SPF two by four that we are gonna to use to test this with. I'm gonna roll this down until the feed roller touches. And now as, let's bring you over here, take a look. You can see that as I continue to crank the knob, you'll see the indicator on your depth of cut start to move up. See right there? Right now it's at 1 16th and at three inches we can cut as much as, a, as an eighth but i think a sixteenth is good for a first test run so let's fire this thing up and you can find out just how loud it is actually so right there will be a sixteenth and we've got it on the high speed so we'll look at the finish on the board cutting it uh high speed 96 cuts per inch You can see here, man, that is smooth. It does have a snipe on about the last three inches there, which, you know, if you're feeding a lot of material, you just overlap your materials, you stack it in there. But um, that's not too bad. You know, that's nothing that's not gonna come off with one of my cordless planers inside, but that is, that is pretty smooth. So let's switch it up to the high speed. And one thing I did read in the book is you never switch the speed unless the machine is running so i'm going to fire it up we're going to go another 16th of an inch we're going to put it on high speed we're going to feed it through one pass
Now I made a mistake. I said I was going to switch it to high speed. I meant switch it to low. Now on low speed, that is not noticeably smoother. There is a snipe here and there is a snipe here. So there's a some kind of an out feed snipe and an in feed snipe both, which that's just part of using one of these things. I don't think anybody's ever figured out how to stop that from happening, but maybe you can see it here in the picture. I get just the right light on it, but you can see the snipe line right across there. But I tell you, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. The, the section between the snipe, very smooth, nice finish. You could, you could drag a card scraper off across that. And if it's not a real high class piece of furniture you're working on, you could go right to stain, right off of that right there. Now let's also take a second here, look at the chips. So you can see down here on the driveway, this is the chips we're talking about. And they're out here in the yard, all the way, I can still see them right about here and we're a good 15, 20 feet from the planer. All right, so I've talked to my local woodcraft dealer and they actually have a pair of in-feed, out-feed tables and they are gracious enough to say, look, just come on over here and get them. They're yours. You don't have to return the whole planer. I thought that was pretty good of them. But while I was inspecting the planer a little bit closer, waiting on that information, I polished up the table here, the feed table, I think it's called. This is basically what your wood slides on underneath the blades. And I've actually found some scratches in the darn thing that are pretty significant. Now, I don't know, I have to focus in on this on post, but right here, there's actually a gouge there that I can catch my fingernail on. Now, is that worth returning the thing and going through all that hassle? I don't think it is. I mean, honestly, I, I like things to be perfect and I like them to be right but I know that I can just take a little bit of really fine sandpaper and just go right over that real quick and it's going to be fine. Um, but I can tell you that from use, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but just from that little bit of feeding we did across this table, you can see some scratches in it right here. And they're, they're, they're not scratches that you can feel, but it's just, you know, from running the wood across there. But then I looked more and more and I found, well, there's another gouge over here that was there before we, before we opened this thing. So these, these gouges, really small gouges, I can barely catch my fingernail on that one. They happened at the factory before this thing was packed up. My suspicion would be that someone maybe dropped the carriage or dropped one of the blades in there and hit that thing. Don't know, don't really know what happened, but you know, hey DeWalt, you can do better than that. All right, found one more problem. So I couldn't figure out why this wheel sometimes wouldn't go up and down right and the, the, the pedal wouldn't go up and down to raise the wheel up and down, right? And then I realized that this little pin here is, is hitting the bracket. And I thought, well, all right, maybe it's spring loaded and you got to push it in. Well, when I went to push it in, okay, it goes in, but it doesn't come back out. We'll open up and look at it. And you can see that this piece is moving in a way that it shouldn't be moving. Now, this is the way this came out of the box. There's a, a washer in here, a spacer. And right beside that spacer on the pin, let's come around the other side here where you can get a better look at it. Right down here on that pin, you can see there's a, there's a slot in that shaft right down in there that this E-clip is supposed to be in. And because that E-clip is slid in here, then this piece can move laterally in a way that's not supposed to, and it can even come out of a hole on the other side. So not a big deal. We're going to fix this. I've already, it, both of them were that way when I found it. And I thought, well, I may as well show you how I fix this. You just hold that pin with your hands and then smack that E-clip with a screwdriver until it's over in the slot. You can even do some of this with your hands, but and you could just take the whole thing off and snap it on there again. But once you got that E-clip in the slot, this thing will no longer move around in a way that it'll come out and interfere with the pedal. And now it works just fine. So not exactly a problem with the planer, but you know, a problem with the stand that came with it. Something else that, you know, not real sure how that wound up in the box that way, but DeWalt, I think you can do better. 
to grow over here today to the woodcraft. Sometimes they're not convenient to, but they're really good people to work with. And they actually had a pair of in-feed, out-feed tables. Now this is where I bought the planer and they were kind enough, the manager here, listen to my problem. And as you can see here on the receipt, he just costed these out, gave me an in-feed and an out, gave me the whole box so that I've got a spare for the other side. So my problem is solved, even though it cost me an extra trip across town. So we went from the, the one that's got the bow in it from shipping to a brand new one and just line them up, make sure they fit right. So even though woodcraft might not be convenient to you, they sure can help you out. Hey, look, even a box that small comes with the obligatory iceberg. All right, we're back from woodcraft. Got our replacement shelf. We're gonna pop that on. And now the last thing we need to check, maybe I should have done this before we actually tested it outside, but you can see here, maybe you can't see on the camera. Let me bring you around to the side here. Right in here, there is about a quarter inch gap under the level and the levels stretch from the end of one table to all the way to the end of the other table. That gap's a little bit excessive. From what I've read online, I couldn't find the instructions for this in the package with the replacement table. It had some instructions, but they didn't have any setup on it. But you can see here, there are a couple of screws here, a couple of Allen head bolts actually, that allow for some adjustment. And what I could find online is that you want about a pennies gap. So about a 16th of a gap at the edges of the table of the planer. And then you want the level to actually only touch on the outboard end of each table. And that allows for the compression of the feed rollers. When they push down on your board, it'll push down on this and you can, maybe you can see it, but it actually moves down about a 16th of an inch. Everything I read online says there's no perfect way to adjust this because you never know how thick of a board and how resilient it is that you're gonna be planing from one setup to the next, but that 1 16th of a gap here is what I'm gonna go for. Now you do want it flush right here. So once you've lowered this down to where the level's sitting on the table, you wanna adjust this end of the outfeed table flushed where it just touches the bottom of the level. You're gonna tighten that up. Okay, and then you're gonna adjust the outboard end up until there's about a 16th of an inch gap on the table, at the edge of the table, or all the way across the table, I guess you'd say. All right, so that one looks good. Now we go back over to this side. And on this side, now it's actually flush all the way across, so we only need to raise the outboard end here until we have about a sixteenth of an inch gap right here. And it's pretty tight. There we go. Yeah, right about there now. The advice I found on the internet was to use a penny here as a spacer, but you can just eyeball this. Now we need to do it on the other side of the table as well. We have the same condition here. We're already flush here. So we just need to raise the back end of the outboard end of the table to where there's about a 16th of an inch gap there. Clamp that one down and we're gonna go back here and do this far corner. It's pretty darn close to where it needs to be. We need to go down just 30 seconds. And that's it. Now the feed tables are set. It's all ready to go. All right, time to sum up a little bit here. Uh, let's talk about uh, what we like and what we don't like. Um, what I do like about this, starting at the bottom, the aluminum base, it's solid. The table is solid. It just feels solid and it sounds solid. And really, you know, the whole thing is, is solid. Even though the top half of this thing has some plastic shrouds on it, I really like the way it's built. Um, I like the four corner screws for your height adjustment. Um, not trying to knock the two screw 
planers. As a matter of fact, leave me a comment down below, you know, if you have a two-screw planer and tell me why it's better. Um, I'm, I'm open to new things. Um, obviously, this is my first planer, so, you know, I, I don't have a two-screw planer to compare it to. Um, going back to the height adjustment, I really like that the height adjustment is chain driven inside this thing. It, it's got a, like a bicycle chain in there that goes around all four of these and keeps them synchronized to keep your, your height very much parallel to your table. Um, I really do like that the tools that you need to change the blades are included and stored on the machine. You, you've got the wrench you need and you've got the magnets you need to change those blades out. Um, I also like that the blades are two-sided. Um, you know, take them off, flip them over when they're dull, and you, you got another go at it. Um, I like, there is a pad, not that you can see it on the camera, but there is a padlock hasp under the power switch there for when you need to lock out, tag out the machine. Uh, a lot of folks, you know, working out of the garage don't really need to do that very often. Um, I mean, obviously you can, you can also unplug this machine, which is you know, the first thing you should always do when you're going to service it. But for anybody who might be using this in a you know commercial or an employment work a place of work or workplace um you need to be able to lock out tag out your machines like this and you can do that with this one i also very much like the ergonomics you know someone did take some time to think about okay how are they going to move this thing around it's big it's heavy it's, it's not easy for one guy to move you know it's 92 pounds i can pick it up and move it but you know 10 years down the road i might not want to but they got some nice handles here in the right spot and they actually have handles down here on the base too. So if you need to grab it down a little bit lower, it's got two sets of handles on there, two different heights, good thinking DeWalt. Let's go back to what we could improve on, what DeWalt could improve on on this. Um, obviously we talked about the, the, the minor gouges in the, the main table here. DeWalt could do a little bit better job doing some QC at the time of packaging. Um, can't really blame the shipping issues on DeWalt, but you know, that's, that's just a, that's just a problem with America and coronavirus time. You know, everybody's ordering everything over the internet and you know, all of our Brown X employees are way overworked. Thank you guys for what you are doing. Just let's stop dropping yellow boxes down the stairs if we could. Um, I would also, you know, we talked earlier about maybe put some magnets up here to hold these tables up because most people who buy a tabletop planer are working in their garage. This, this is not your typical professional setup, not that it won't work for professional work, but most of us are gonna put this away on a shelf somewhere where we're not using it. And yeah, you can take these off, but most people would wanna just flip them up. And if it had a magnet there to grab it, pick it up, throw it on a shelf, when you get it back out, flip it back down, much easier to handle. Um, the aluminum base we talked about is very solid. I did find some casting burrs in this when I was moving it around. There's actually one on the bottom of this handle that I'm gonna take a file to a little bit later. And there are four holes, there's one on each corner here that I'm not real sure what they're for, but those also have a burr on it. Wouldn't take long to just deburr that hole with a drill bit. And matter of fact, I just did that when it's done. So that's how long that would have taken DeWalt to do. Could do a little better, not a big deal. Most people buying this thing have the ability to handle something like that on their own. Um, would also like to see a dedicated way to stow the cord on this machine, whether it's just right around the chain drive housing here or something. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of cord management. And if you're, if you're not designing your equipment with cord management in mind at the end of it, then yeah, I, take a, I take a half a point off for that. I wouldn't take a half a star off if you're looking at the five star rating, but I'd take a, a tenth of a star off for that. Um, the other thing that DeWalt has got to get on board with You've got to offer a helical head version of this or an option or something because there's so many people out there right now that are buying this brand new day one, disassembling it and putting a better head in it. You gotta get on board to walk, you're missing out. Um, the blades we talked about, I do like that the blades are two-sided. I would also like to maybe see some blades that are sharpenable if you're not going to go with the helical head model, you know, because I'm just not big on disposable blades and things like this. I mean, I've got a plane over there and it's got a blade in it and the blade is a hundred years old because it's been sharpened over and over and over. It was it's actually 121 years old. It, you know, it still works. It just, you need a way to sharpen it. Um, even if it's something you got to ship it off to do. I mean, a lot of folks would buy three or four sets of blades 
ship them all off at one time and get them back and they're set for you know, a year or two. Um, am I satisfied with this? Absolutely. If, if I was gonna recommend to anybody what planer to buy, that's the one right there. Based on my knowledge, yes, I this is my first planer, but I've done you know done a lot of research into all the planers that are available. Like I said, I came close to buying the Q Tech, which was bought out by Wuhan or Wahoo. I can't remember the name of the company. Came very close to that one because because it comes with a helical head already in it, Dewalt. So that's all I got for you today. Definitely recommend this planer. Uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, tell us what kind of planer you have. Is it a, a two screw or a big four screw one like this? Um, are you happy with it? And tell me if I handed you $600, would you buy this to replace it? So thanks for watching and come on back and watch the rest of our videos. I've got two more filming today. So see you again soon. One more thing. Don't forget to subscribe, please.